Hi, I'm Kalila Reynolds, and welcome to another episode of JN Talking Wealth, brought to you in partnership with the JN Group. If you're interested in achieving financial freedom and building generational wealth, this is the program for you. Please stay with us. Are you among the many persons who view home and contents insurance as a luxury rather than a necessity? Well, if you fall in this category, then today's program is definitely for you. On today's episode of JN Talking Wealth, we'll be chatting with Joseph Holness. He's the Assistant General Manager of Reinsurance and Underwriting at JN General Insurance Company. And he's going to explain the importance of home and contents insurance and how it can be a powerful tool in your financial arsenal. But before we hear from him, let's check in with the Spotlight. Yes, I think it's vital to insure things within the household because in case there's a natural disaster fire, you know that you'll have assurance to say that you'll get back compensation for those. No, my reason for now is that I'm not classify them thing they as assets still. Uh, not currently, no, because I'm 18 years old. I'm not yet a, a homeowner, but in the future I would because you know anything can happen. So. I would want to ensure the contents of my home awesome. in the future. I tried, but the process is too long. Okay, thanks. Yeah, for sure. Like, if nothing happens, like a fire, water, rain, flood, anything, you're supposed to can have the insurance when the goods in the house, forget the back, isn't it? I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to insure my things there. When they mash up, I just buy some new one, I need to insure them. Thanks for staying with us and welcome back to JN Talking Wealth. We're discussing protecting the assets that matter. Hi, Joseph. Hello, how are you? I am well, how are you? Very well, thanks. Okay, so let's start by talking about home insurance and contents insurance. What's the difference? All right, typically home refers to the structure, the building um, on the property. So you have the option to insure both your building and the contents within your personal effects, appliances, etc. Or you can do them individually. There is no requirement or obligation. You have to do both simultaneously. So you can do the building on its own or the contents on its own. Ah, so there's two separate types of insurance because I think a lot of people have a misconception that you do home insurance and everything inside is covered because it's your home. Not at all, not at all. You have to, you have to be specific as to what you're insuring. And for your building as well, persons tend to, if you have a swimming pool, that ought to be specified, you know, um, out buildings, etc. Your contents, that's not automatically insured. You have to include that in your insurance and give a figure, both for the building, the structure, and a figure for the contents as to how much each should be insured for, mm. and two separate figures. Uh, but you can combine them if you want to under one policy, but still segregate the figures. Building figure, contents figure. Well, since you can insure your content separately, that sounds like if I'm a renter, I can also insure my content. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, there's a misconception here, renter's insurance, um, which essentially is if you're a tenant, renters tend to be a North American terminology because there it is, by law, before you can rent somewhere, you have to be able to demonstrate that you have especially liability insurance as a tenant. So it mm. tends to be called renter's insurance in North America. Here in Jamaica, that terminology is creeping into the industry, but essentially um, we just refer to it as contents insurance and it's geared at persons who don't own their home. You are, you are a tenant living in somebody else's um, building. So what types of things can I insure under this? Under your Content contents? Content insurance, yes. All the belongings within your house. So um, your appliances, your clothing, your bed, your you know, kitchen contents, knives, forks, um, your jewelry, your paintings, your stereo equipment, um, 
you know, all this fancy camera equipment. If this is at home, you can also mm -hmm. ensure that there as well. Right. So if I wanted to ensure just some of the things in the home, like maybe the larger appliances, the more expensive things, or if I had the equipment there or designer clothes, you mentioned jewelry, can I ensure just those specific things? You can, but it's in your interest to specify that that's what you're insuring and not everything in the house. That's an important point because um, there's the dreaded average clause, which is not as dread as people think, meaning... The average clause, you said? Correct. Average clause. Okay, let's hear what that is. So if you underinsure, if you have a million dollars of contents and you only insured for 500,000 and you lost 250,000 by way of fire, flood, hurricane or otherwise, you had a million you insured for 500. You're claiming 250. You're only going to get 50% of that 250 because mm. you insured for 250. The claim is settled in, sorry, you insured for, for half. 50%, half. Right. The claim is settled in direct proportion that you insured to the value at risk. Easy way to remember um, average clause, and it's not just contents, it's for the building as well, um, is did upon should times the loss. What you did, what you insured for, mm -hmm upon what you should have insured for mm -hmm. times the loss. So that is the formula used to calculate. Oh. If you insure for what you actually have there, that formula is not applicable. Um, and that's there essentially to, to mitigate against anti-selection against insurers. I'm sure that I'm sure that catch a lot of people because you think, okay, I'm insured for five hundred thousand and I only lost two fifty, so I should get back my full two fifty because I'm insured for five hundred. Yeah, it, it is it is uh, an issue within the industry, and that's not unique to Jamaica. This is insurance worldwide, and there are valid reasons for it. Policyholders may not think there are, but you asked a question which to some extent explains why it is there. Can you insure just what you want to insure instead of everything? Mm -hmm. So answer is yes. So you decide to insure only what you want, your designer clothes, maybe your camera equipment, but then you have a fire or a burglary, burglary and what's taken, none of those things, but instead you know, your 55 inch curved television. Person would say, well, that 500,000 that I insured was meant to include that TV as well. Mm -hmm. So the average clause is there to set a level playing field. Okay, if it was meant to include that, this is your value at risk. Okay, and this is your loss and the formula is applied. So if you're not going to insure everything in the home, it is recommended you specify and make it absolutely clear what it is you're insuring. So there is no ambiguity should unfortunately you have a loss. And also um, it establishes to some extent um, the value of the item. So there's less quibbling when there is a claim as to what the value of that particular item um, was insured for. You mentioned two scenarios under which someone might issue a claim. You mentioned fire, and you mentioned burglary. When you're taking out your insurance, what is it that you're protected against? Do you have to specify that it's fire, burglary, flood, hurricane? Nowadays, you don't have to. We sell what's called a comprehensive homeowner's insurance policy. And again, any honest insurance person will tell you that's misleading. There is nothing called a comprehensive policy per se for motor or home, even though it's called that. Because that gives the impression everything is insured, mm -hmm. which is not. Every policy has exceptions and exclusions and the home is no different. But it's called comprehensive because it's perhaps the most complete policy that you can buy within the industry. So here in the Caribbean, we live in an earthquake and hurricane zone. So First and foremost, your policy is covering losses by hurricane, earthquake, flood associated with those catastrophic perils. Um, and then we get into other things such as fire, 
riot and strike, burglary, theft, burst pipes in the home. Mm. Your homeowner's policy also goes a step further than your commercial business policy and gives you liability coverage as well. So um, if I have a, under my homeowner's policy, if I invited you to my home as a guest and you slipped on my floor and injured yourself, the standard homeowner's policy does provide what's called public liability to um, compensate me for any uh, claim you may bring against me, legal yeah, or anything that I may be liable to you at law for that injury that you sustained. In addition to that, there is employer's liability. Here in Jamaica, um, we have a culture still of having helpers, handymen around, gardeners, and so on. So your homeowner's policy, and a lot of people are not aware of this, actually covers them up to a certain amount. You know, it's not unlimited. The coverage ranges from a low of 2 million to a high of 10, 20 million, depending on what you know, you negotiate, but that tends to come automatically under the policy. The perils you asked about, you don't have to stipulate. The hurricane, the earthquake, the burglary, the flood, the fire, all that comes automatically. Good, good. So there's another misconception that mm -hmm. insurance, homeowners, content insurance, this stuff is for rich people. You know, you have to be rich. I'm going to be insuring my my fabulous paintings and my expensive jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, is that actually a misconception? Is How affordable is it? You know, surprisingly, most persons who have paintings and jewelry don't insure them. Mm -hmm. They insure their building. They insure their regular contents. Um, you know, I know of a gentleman who had perhaps the largest art collection in Jamaica, and he never insured it. But he insured his home to ensure that his family had a roof over their head if something happened. Um, he insured, made sure the appliances, etc., in the home were insured. Clothing. You probably know better than me what clothing costs nowadays. And, you know, if you have a fire, burst pipes, you know, even during the heavy rainy seasons here where persons may have issues of gutters blocking up and water channeling into their mm -hmm. homes through windows or whatever. And they lose a lot of clothing that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's not cheap to replace your clothing. That's true. So, um, but there is a facility to ensure your um, jewelry, your works of art, etc. Those come with some conditions. The jewelry, for instance, you can do it whilst it's within the home or you can do it anywhere in Jamaica, or you can do it on a worldwide basis. And of course, the premium varies accordingly. Right. To insure it only within the home, it's going to cost less than if you're going to insure it while you're traveling, you know, around the world. Um, but, and for that, we normally recommend or ask certainly for jewelry that you produce a valuation from a reputable jeweler. And that's for two reasons, mainly one, to establish that the item does exist because you know you can go to the beach and say well you lost your Rolex watch and secondly um, to establish the value up front um, so if it's stolen or lost here's a valuation that was done within the last 6-12 months or whatever by one of the established um, jewelry stores I almost call a name they are free advertising but you know and um you know, it's sus the value that one is asking for is substantiated by the valuation. So how affordable is it to do home or content insurance? For JNGI, you can insure your contents for a minimum annual policy of $20,000 plus GCT. And I think that would give you basic coverage and i'm talking from the top of my head now of approximately two million to three two point two million to two point five million dollars of contents coverage within your home for the structure itself um again i think our minimum premium on that runs at about thirty five thousand or thirty six thousand plus gct of course we can't forget that and we have no control over that the tax aspect 
um, to ensure your structure. And that could give you coverage for, um, again, depending on a number of factors, but all things being equal, and I'll explain what that means shortly in this context. Maybe a house starting at about 12 million and up at 36,000 per year. Why I say all things being equal, a number of factors come into play. If you have your home in a resort area next to the ocean, it's going to cost more right. than if your house is sitting here in New Kingston, for instance, away from the water, which during a hurricane we right. know is going to impact you more than if you're inland. Um, construction, what type of roof do you have? Is it wooden shingles or is it slab? You know, um, is it metal that may peel off in a hurricane? Wooden shingles tend to ignite easier than a slab roof. So, you know, there are varying factors there. And the figures that you cited are annual. Annual, annual. So if I'm yeah, paying 36,000 a year, that's 3,000 a month. That's not bad. No, that's not bad. But again, depends on the replacement value of your home. And that's another key thing for the building. It's your replacement value, not the market value. Mm -hmm. What it will cost to rebuild that structure and that compound. Now what you can sell it for. Okay, and replacement, I would think with the way our real estate is going in Jamaica tends to be somewhat lower than market value now. Can insurance be seen as an investment? I'd rather think of it as prudent, a prudent financial decision to make. Life insurance, which is not my exp of expertise, I'd perhaps say has more of an investment side to it than general insurance. So, um, you know, considering, as I said, where we live in the Caribbean, hurricane, earthquake zone, and, and let's face it, um, for the average person acquiring a home is a significant investment. So indirectly, you could say it is safeguarding your investment. And, um, you know, we, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, the, the impact is significant and um, has, it can be a burden on the society and the economy and our governments as well, but for the individuals themselves, you know, to not have a home to go to during a hurricane or, or a fire, and you don't know how you're going to restore that, mm -hmm. um, it cannot be a nice feeling. Yeah. So cannot everybody's be. used to doing things online now. Can I get a quotation or purchase a policy online? From j and you certainly can. From quote stage to purchase stage, beginning to end, you can do that. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Everybody now knows where to go. Thank you so much, jo Joseph. You're welcome. Hope I was helpful. <laughs> Very helpful. So Joseph definitely gave us a wealth of information, so much to think about when it comes to protecting our assets. And I'm sure this discussion has been helpful to you, our viewers. Hopefully it's opened your eyes to the importance of home and contents insurance and how this could be considered an investment for your financial future. Now, if you need further information about any of the products and services discussed in today's program, please contact the experts at JNGI. Also, visit jngijamaica.com to learn more about how their products and services can help you achieve your financial goals. Now it's time for our giveaway. Are you ready? Here it is. Name three items in your home that you can protect with contents insurance. Send your answers to jngroupmarketingpromotions at gmail.com. The first person with the correct answer will receive a gift certificate valued at 50 US dollars. Good luck. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Join us again, same time, same place for another episode of JN Talking Wealth. And remember to like, subscribe and share this video and follow JNGI on all their social media platforms. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Take care.